Hi folks, <clears throat> hope you're okay, it's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. Don't forget my website, jasonburnspreacher.com, jasonburnspreacher.com and you'll be blessed if you go on that website and keep in touch with me. You can contact me there. You can go onto my Facebook fa and also uh, Twitter and you can keep in contact with me uh, from a variety of angles if you want to do that. So please keep in contact. It's good to be with you. I just want to, I've been, I read this book uh, over Christmas. It's called A Case for Christmas by Lee Strobel. Or Strobel. And I just want to read a few quotes. Uh, you know, a lot of people look at um, the, the Gospels, the Gospel of Mark, Luke, and John, and they just think, well, there's a bundle of contradiction there, and it's not really that valuable or important but i just want to say that the more i read the gospels the more profound they are i've studied the gospels in depth and what i found is the teaching of, of our lord jesus christ is so deep and rich that you'll be so blessed i've been studying recently the gospel of john and the teaching in that book is so deep and profound and so spiritual you know you would never get to the depths of the book even if you had a lifetime of study of the book such as the richness of it so that's the gospels in the bible tremendously blessed by them i just want to share a few thoughts about the gospels uh, page 18 of the book while i appreciated blomberg's comments so far i wasn't ready to move on yet the issue of who wrote the Gospels is tremendously important. I wanted specific details, names, quotations. I finished off my coffee and put the cup on his desk. Pen poised, I prepared to dig deeper. Let's go back to Matthew, Mark and Luke, I said. What specific evidence do you have they are the authors of the Gospels? Blomberg leaned forward. He's a world authority on this. Again, he says, the oldest and probably more significant testimony came from Papias, who is about A.D. 125, specifically affirmed that Mark had carefully and accurately recorded Peter's eyewitness observations. In fact, he said Mark made no mistakes and did not include any false statement. And Papias said Matthew had preserved the teachings of Jesus as well. The Narinaeus writing about A.D. 180 confirmed the traditional authorship. In fact, here he said, reaching for a book, he flipped it open and read Irenaeus' words, Irenaeus. Matthew published his own gospel among the Hebrews in their own tongue when Peter and Paul were preaching the gospel in Rome and founding the, the, the church there. After their departure, Mark the disciple and interpreter of Peter himself handed down to us in writing the substance of Peter's preaching. Luke, the follower of Paul, set down in a book the gospel preached by his teacher. Then John, the disciple of the Lord, who also leaned on his breast himself, produced his gospel while he was living at Ephesus in Asia. So there it's ancient testimony of who wrote the gospels. That ancient testimony is a very powerful testimony. And, and, and the critics don't like that testimony because it means we're able to date the gospels uh, and, um, to date the, and, and to know their context. Page uh, 19, Ancient versus Modern Biographies. There were all some troubling aspects. There were still some troubling aspects of the Gospels that I needed to resolve. In particular, I wanted to better understand the kind of literary genre they represented. When I go to a bookstore and look in the biography section, I don't see the same kind of writing that I see in the Gospels, I said. When somebody writes a biography these days, they thoroughly delve into the person's life. But look at Mark, he doesn't talk about the birth of Jesus or really anything through Jesus' early adult years. Instead, he focuses on, on a three-year period and spends half his gospel on the events leading up to and culminating in Jesus last week. How do you explain that? How do you explain that? And Blombird says, the literary reason is that basically this is how people wrote biographies in the ancient world. 
They did not have the sense as we do today that it was important to give equal proportion to all periods of an individual's life or that it was necessary to tell the story in ritually, strictly chronological, chronological order or even to quote people verbatim as long as the essence of what they had said was preserved. Ancient Greek and Hebrew didn't even have a symbol for quotation marks. About Jesus' audacious claims. Yes, I can, he said. It's more implicit, but you find it there. Think of the story of Jesus walking on water found in Matthew 14, 22, 23 and Mark 6, 45, 52. Most English translations hide the Greek by quoting Jesus as saying, Fear not, it is I. Actually, the Greek literally says, Fear not, I am. Those last two words are identical to what Jesus said in John 8, 58, when he took upon himself the divine name, I am, which is the way God revealed himself to Moses at the burning bush. Believing the virgin birth. Though 79% of Americans believed the virgin birth, it was a stumbling block for philosopher William Lane Craig when he was young. He said, I thought it was absurd, he said, for the virgin birth to be true, a Y chromosome had to be created. I did nothing in Mary's over him because Mary didn't possess the genetic material to produce a male child. Still, he became a Christian. You don't need to have all your questions answered to come to faith, he told me. You just have to say the weight of the evidence seems to show this is true. So even though I don't have the answers to all my questions, I'm going to believe and hope for answers in the long run. Craig, who became an expert on scientific evidence for a creator, later resolved the issue. If I really do believe in a God who created the universe, Craig said, smiling, then for him to create a Y chromosome would be child's play. The reliability as Luke as historian. First of all, did Christianity copy early myths? Skeptics claim Christianity, including the virgin birth, is merely a repackaging of pagan mystery religions. Not true, says apologist Alex McFarland. Contrary to mythology, the New Testament deals with actual persons and historical events open to investigation. He said, researcher Gretchen Passantino agrees that Christ's birth is radically different from the mythological tales. For example, instead of a virgin willingly, conceivingly, by the invisible power of God, the myths give us lurid tales of lusty gods having forced sex with women. She said, instead of the incarnation, the myths give us half examples, half divine superheroes, subject to same weaknesses, sins and frustrations as we are. Albert Schweizer said those who claim Christianity was derived from these myths manufacture out of the various fragments of information a kind of universal mystery religion which never existed. And C.S. Lewis confirmed Christianity originated in a circle where no traces of that nature of religion was present. About the reliability of Luke the historian. For instance, in Luke 3 1, he refers to Licinius being the Tetrarch of Albany in AD 27. For years, scholars pointed to this as evidence that Luke didn't know what he was talking about, since everybody knew that Licinius was not a Tetrarch, but rather the ruler of Chalice half a century earlier. If Luke can't get the basic site fact right, they suggested that nothing he has written can be trusted. That's when archaeology stepped in. An inscription was later found for the time of Tiberius from AD 14 to 37, which named Licinius as Tetrarch in Albany near Damascus, just as Luke had written. McRae explained it turned out there had been two government officials named Licinius. One more Luke was shown to be exactly right. So we, we could go on, but the modern mind basically is skeptical about the life of Jesus, doesn't believe that Jesus existed. 
uh, this trend is 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 growing, uh, especially amongst young people. But no proper scholar in the academic world would take that seriously. Most scholars would acknowledge that the Gospels are part of the evidence base of the life of Christ who Christ is. Now, modern scholars might not agree with everything in the Gospels, but they would say that the basics of what the Gospels are saying about the life of Christ can be found not only in the Gospels, but also in other literature. What I would encourage you to do is to read the Gospels yourself, to be open to them, to study them. And what you'll find is a Jesus that came to die for you and to give you new life. So don't prejudice your mind against the Gospels, but open your mind and read them. And when you read them, you'll find tremendous truths uh, and, and tremendous teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. I say this to the Muslims as well. Read the Gospels, read the Injil, and find out for yourself about his teaching, about Jesus' teaching and what he came to do in this world. Thank you for listening, and God bless you.